as we have seen in the last session uh, the solution to f of d y is equal to f of x when f of x is not equal to 0 is y is equal to u plus f of x and here this is the particular integral and this is the complementary function we also saw that the particular integral is nothing but 1 by f of d f of x yes now the uh, problem is that there is no one particular way to uh, solve this here f of x could be anything so depending on what type of uh, function it is we need to come out with a slightly different solution or way of solving the problem so this f of x could be or could involve uh, something like e to the power of mx right or it could uh, involve uh, f of x uh, equal to sine hyperbolic x or it could be uh, hyperbolic cos or it could be involving cos or it could be sin mx or it could involve x to the power of m or it could involve e to the power of mx times v so there could be uh, different um, types of functions involved on the right hand side so what we are going to do is we are going to look at it uh, one by one so let's begin with e to the power of mx now we know f of d e m x is equal to f of m e m x uh, we have already seen this before now if f of m is not equal to 0 we could say uh, 1 by f of a d e m x is equal to 1 by f of m e to the power of m x is pretty uh, straightforward now since f of m is in the denominator that's why it can't be 0 now let's verify this f of d times 1 by f of m e to the power of mx is equal to 1 by let's exchange f of m let's take it out and let's bring this in so what do we get we get 1 by f of no not 1 by f of d e to the power of mx 1 by f of m times now we know here this is nothing but f of m e to the power of mx these two get cancelled out and we are left with e to the power of mx yes so which is where we wanted to but now this is only when f of m is not equal to 0 now if f of m is equal to 0 then what do we do then we know that d minus m is a factor of f of d so let f of d equal to d minus m to the power of 4 r phi of d depending on what this is 
it may end up with r number of repeated roots times another function okay so now what do we do here remember phi of d is not equal to 0 because then the whole thing becomes 0 now we know we have to take it step by step f of d e to the power of mx times v is equal to e to the power of mx f of d plus m v yes now here if we say v is equal to 1 then we end up with f of d e m x times v is equal to e m x f of d plus m so that means if you notice v actually disappears because this is 1 so here if you notice d is being replaced by d plus m so this is important just remember this so basically what this uh, implies is that 1 by f of d e to the power of m x is equal to can be written as 1 by d minus m to the power of r phi d e to the power of m x which means 1 by d minus m to the power of r times we can do a little bit of grouping and this can be written as 1 by d minus m r times 1 by q m e to the power of m x. Now remember here q of m can be in the denominator y because this is not equal to 0. Yes, because here also see we started off with this. Okay, let's again rearrange them. Let's take phi of m out and 1 by d minus m to the power of r e to the power of mx together. Now, here remember this 1 by d minus m we have. Because of this, we can replace d by d plus m. Yes. So, let's say d minus uh, d plus m minus m would be m will disappear basically to the power of r e to the power of mx yes so basically replacing d with d plus m and remember what 1 by d is nothing but the inverse of d d is derivative 1 by d is integral yes so e to the power of mx by phi of m times 1 by d r so which means now we have to integrate 1 r times so what do we get when we integrate it r times so first time when we integrate we get 1 by d r minus 1 once we have integrated so we are left with x integral of 1 is x yes second time when we integrate what happens we get x square by 2 next when we integrate we get x q by 3 yes so which means in general we get an x to the power of r in the numerator and in the denominator we get r factorial so which means we can now remove this so we end up with e to the power of mx by phi m 
times x to the power of r by r factorial. This is 1 by f of d e to the power of mx. Remember m is a root of f of d equal to 0 repeated r times. Okay. Now let's verify it. Verify whether it is correct or not. So let's start with f of d times e to the power of mx by phi of m x to the power of r by r factorial. This can be written as d minus m to the power of r phi m yes f of d is equal to somewhere we have here I have seen taken it in the denominator part only f of d is equal to d minus m r phi of d times e to the power of m x by phi of m times x to the power of r by r factorial. Let's regroup them. So, remember phi of m can be written as phi of d times d minus m r to the power of r and this remains as it is. Okay, so this can be written as phi of d d minus m can be replaced by d by saying okay, let d, uh, d is equal to d plus m. So, d plus m minus m is d. So, d r e to the power of mx by phi m x to the power of r by r factorial. So, here we are replacing d by d plus m. Okay. So, here again um, phi d times d to the power of r by phi d phi m can be written as phi d x to the power of r by r factorial e to the power of mx. So, these two get cancelled out and this e to the power of mx times d to the power of r x to the power of r by r factorial. Okay, Now, this is uh, remember um, d is derivative right. So, we have to differentiate this r times. See we arrived at this by integrating r times. Now, we are differentiating r times. So, which means we are going to get what? First time when we differentiate, we get x to the power of r minus 1, r by r times r minus 1 factorial. Yes, so r r disappears. Second time when we do it, what will happen? r minus 1, x to the power of r minus 2 by r minus 1 times r minus 2 factorial. So, these two disappear. This will keep on going till this disappears, till we reach 1. So, at which point this would become 1, yes. So, which means this is equal to e to the power of mx, which is where we wanted to. So, take it step by step by step. Now, if f of x is equal to k that means a constant in that case what happens 1 by f of d k is equal to 1 by f of d it can be re written as e to the power of 0 x so which means what the general form when we write it it says e to the power of mx so here it is e to the power of 0 x so, this implies that m is equal to 0. So, which means 1 by f of d times k is equal to 1 by f of 0 k. 
because this would be 1 by f of d k is equal to 1 by f of m k and here m is 0. So, f of 0 is the constant term in the f of d. Okay. Now, the first case is the toughest case. Then it becomes a little bit easier as we go along because we get the overall uh, flow. So, when f of x is equal to cos mx, in that case what happens? Now, we know f of d square cos mx is equal to f of minus m square inside itself cos mx. Yes. So, which means we can write it as 1 by f of d square times f of d square cos mx is equal to 1 by f of d square times f of minus m square cos mx. Yes, we can substitute this d with minus m square. Here we do not have to do, uh, no substitution is required. So, these two get cancelled directly. So, we end up with cos mx is equal to here 1 by f of d square times f of minus m square cos mx. And similarly, when f of x is equal to sin mx, in that case it would be sin mx is equal to 1 by f of minus m square sin mx. Okay. Now, when we have f of x is equal to e to the power of mx times v. Now, remember here in, in the first case, when we looked at this particular aspect, where is that? Uh -huh, here. Right. e to the power of mx times v. v. Here we treated v as 1. So, basically it was as if it is not there. So, it was a special case. Here, we are talking of v not equal to 1, right, when v is a function. So, where v is equal to a function of x, some function of x. So, in this case, f of d e to the power of mx v is equal to Again, remember, we are bringing from there itself e to the power of mx f of d plus m v. So, basically, we can say 1 by f of d e to the power of mx v is equal to e to the power of mx times 1 by f of d plus m times v. To verify what we are going to do is we are going to take this right hand side multiply it by f of d and we should get back e to the power of mx times v okay let's see so f of d times e to the power of mx why am i writing this just dot multiplied by e to the power of mx 1 by f of d plus m times v. Yes. So, this is the right hand side. Now, e to the power of mx f of d plus m we can write times 1 by f of d plus m times v. So, these two get cancelled out and we are left with e to the power of mx times v. Now, here, how, how did this f of d become f of d plus m? Again, remember here, f of d e to the power of mx times v 
is equal to e to the power of m max f of d plus m v yes f of d f of d plus m v right we already knew this now which means we have looked at what all cases we have looked at when f of x is equal to e to the power of mx we have seen when f of x is equal to a constant when f of x is equal to cos mx when f of x is equal to sin mx when f of x is equal to e to the power of mx times v so i think that's enough for today bye for now